Hey guys, it's Sarah and I have a review today. Today I'm going to be reviewing the book Why We Write About Ourselves, which is edited by Meredith Moran. This is a book of short essays written by authors who have written memoirs and also have, um, a lot of them have also written other works, but um, memoir is something that was kind of a requirement to be included in here. So this book was sent to me by Penguin Random House. They contacted me and asked me if I would be interested in receiving this in exchange for a review, and I said yes. I thought it sounded really interesting, and I would I really like to hear about writers as they are actually writing their works and kind of what's going through their head and uh, what they're thinking and what they're feeling and things like that. So this book definitely delivered on that aspect of it. This book includes 20 different writers in here, and they're basically just short essays about um, you know, why they decided to write their memoir, what made their story important, how they felt when they were writing it, some of the steps they had to take, what was the hardest thing about writing it, what was the easiest thing about writing it. Um, and then it also gave some advice on, um, for people who want to write a memoir, you know, kind of their little takeaways from it so that people can have um, some inspiration from them as well. So there were some that I really liked, some that I didn't like so much, so I will talk about those. Of the 20 essays in here, there were six that really stood out to me and kind of felt like they were going to stick with me for a little bit longer. The first one was by Ishmael Bea. He actually wrote A Long Way Gone, which I own, and I have not read this yet. Um, he was a boy soldier in Africa as a young child. I believe he left when he was 13 and came to the States, and now he is an educated scholar, and he um, has written numerous books, including this one, which is his memoir. So as I was reading his essay, I really enjoyed the way he wrote. He was very eloquent and he used really beautiful words. And as I was reading it, it almost felt like a song. I don't know what it was, but I was just like, oh my gosh, I was like enchanted by it. So that essay made me want to read this book sooner rather than later, like I'm gonna read this this year. There were also a couple of essays that I really enjoyed. One of them was by Kate Christensen and she was just really funny and her memoir is called Blue Plate Special and I believe she talks a lot about food, which I really enjoy. I enjoy books about food and things like that. So I may be trying to pick that up sometime here soon as well. And um, David Sheff also wrote a really good piece um, about writing about addiction because he has a son who is a drug addict and that is what his memoir is about. And his son actually wrote a memoir on his own life as well, so that was pretty interesting. But I thought he had some pretty uh, interesting things to say. I also really enjoyed the essay by A.M. Holmes and actually wanted to look into a book of fiction that she wrote, which was discussed in her essay, and that is called The End of Alice. And that one sounded kind of creepy and interesting. So that is one that I've actually added to my wish list to see if I can try to find it somewhere to read it. And um, the last one that really stuck with me that I really enjoyed was Jessmine Ward. And Jessmine Ward actually lived in New Orleans when Hurricane Katrina hit and lost her house and lost all of her possessions along with the rest of her family. And she ended up writing a piece of fiction about that, which is called Salvage the Bones. And I have added that to my library list to pick up and read that soon. I vividly remember Hurricane Katrina. I was living in California at the time, um, but it was something that I just, it really stuck in my mind because it was all over the place. And um, I had lived on the Gulf Coast for most of my life. So um, just knowing the areas and, you know, having been to New Orleans a lot, it was uh, very heartbreaking. So I didn't realize that that was a piece of fiction and it was um, actually won the National Book Award as well in 2011, I believe. So I want to pick that book up. And she also wrote a memoir about um, losing her brother and some of his friends as well, kind of like a, I believe it's more of a gang violence type of situation in New Orleans. So um, I may be wanting to look into that one as well. But the way that she wrote was very beautiful and um, I feel like she has very important stories to tell. Out of the 20, there were two that I, didn't enjoy so much, and then the rest of them, I just, I don't know, I just kind of forgot about them already. But uh, the first one that I, I didn't really enjoy, something about it bothered me, was Anne Lamott. And she's actually a pretty popular author and memoirist. She has multiple memoirs. But I found myself reading a paragraph where she talked about how she would never betray someone's trust who she's writing about. She would never betray their trust. She would never do this, never do that. And literally the next paragraph was her talking about how she wrote a book about a friend of hers 
and her friend was very uncomfortable with it, did not want her to publish it. She took steps to change everything about the character so that it wouldn't be recognizable as her. Her friend was still uncomfortable with it because it was her, still her story and she published it anyway. And then she was surprised when she lost that friendship. I was like, you just said <laughs> that you would not betray anybody and you would not break anyone's trust, but you obviously broke your trust with you know, this friend because you wanted to publish it so bad. So that bothered me to a point where I probably will not pick up any of her books because it was extremely contradictory, literally from one paragraph to the next. It was, I was just like, you just said you would never do that and you did it, so, okay. There was also an essay from James McBride and it started out really, really well. I was enjoying it. He had a really great quote that I actually ended up writing down and his quote was, you should not know everything. If you know everything, you shouldn't be a writer. You should be God. And I loved that quote and I actually like wrote it down on my phone because I loved it so much. And from there, he kind of went downhill for me because he went on a big rant about how pretty much everything in the world is racist. And I was like, okay, what's happening? What's happening? There were also a lot of common themes that I found throughout the essays. A lot of them were talking about the importance of being honest in your memoir because you are telling your story. You're telling your story. You have to be as honest as you can about it. You also need to take into consideration the people that you're writing about because these are people that are in your life and you want to keep them in your life most likely. So, you know, just try to be as honest as you possibly can without being hurtful or insulting um, or trying to tear anyone down around you. A lot of them also took the steps and gave the advice to, you know, talk to your family members and talk to the people in your life who are going to be included in your book. Make sure they know that you're writing it. Make sure they know what you're trying to portray and what you're trying to say. Make sure that they're comfortable with it. And honestly, if they're not and you don't want to lose that friendship, you can take them out, you know, it's or you can completely change them so that they're not recognizable if they're comfortable with that. So just kind of things like that, which was very interesting and made me think about what if I wrote a memoir and who I would need to talk to and who I would want to include and not include. And um, it really makes you think because writing a memoir, you know, it can really hurt your family because all their stuff is out there. So you have to think about that before you just go and start doing it. Another thing that I liked in the book is that at the beginning of each essay, the um, the editor actually included a list of vitals. So it has the vitals and this is kind of like a little bit of background information about the uh, writer and their career. And then they have collected works here. So this is all of the works that they have had published, which I actually found myself referencing a lot, especially the memoirs and the nonfiction. I would go back and kind of remind myself of the title and when it came out. And um, I really thought that was a really nice touch and I found myself referencing it quite a bit. So I liked that a lot too. So overall, I gave this book four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would, to be honest with you. I, I thought it'd be like a fun, quick read, but I actually felt like I learned a lot from it. And I have found some authors that I want to look more into now as well. So thank you so much, Penguin, for sending me this. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and all of these thoughts and opinions are purely my own. And I am very happy to have received this and read it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please let me know if you have any questions at all. This book is going to be on sale January 26th. So that is today. So I will leave a Amazon link to it if you want to go and pick it up. Um, if it's something that you're interested in learning about writers behind the scenes or if you're interested in writing a memoir yourself or even a piece of fiction, if you're interested in writing at all, I think this would be um, something that's really good and kind of get your juices flowing and think about how you can get started. I would highly recommend it. Thank you guys for joining me today. I will see you again soon. Bye.